welcome to Made for Free. I'm Steve and I live here in France with my long-suffering wife Kim. Just going to give away. And today is our first video. So we're going to be making wind spinners. Um, the, to us these are actually free. Uh, there are a few components that you may have to purchase but uh, it certainly won't break the bank. It won't cost much. Right, there's four stages. And, but before we get into that I'm going to show you where we get the wood from for free well actually a bottle of wine but um, we're going to show you that anyway and uh, hope you enjoy watching I'll get back to you soon hello and welcome back to made for free okay I'm now going to show you where I'll get some of my free wood from this way okay uh, I don't know what I'm going to make out of this yet. I'll make my mind up when I actually pull it out and find out what's in there. We've got some oak, some beech, some pine. Um, excuse the noise, the, uh, the lads are working over there. And in the UK, this costs an absolute fortune for companies to get rid of. Possibly the same in what paper parts of the world you're in. And we're doing this guy a favor by getting rid of some for him. You can do the same. If you can visit your local pine door manufacturers, your furniture manufacturers, every shop, factory, anything that uses a machine, all has stuff delivered in wood or on pallets. All there for the asking. Go and ask first, and a lot of the time they'll say yes and with thanks. And if you go enough, they'll, they'll take your phone number and they'll let you know when they've got it in. Pretty much like this guy here. Right, I'm going rummaging. I'll let you know what I'm going to make when I've found some wood. Speak later. Bye now. Hi, I hope you enjoyed that little bit. Now we're back now. Uh, I've changed the t-shirts as you can tell. Um, so we've now got our trailer of wood. We're now going to make some wind spinners out of what we've got. And believe me, there's plenty left for a few more projects. So I hope you enjoyed that. And now I'm going to show you the first stages of the wind, the wind spinner. So basically it's just a piece of bar, a load of recycled wood, which you've seen. And we'll go through the preparation, because most of it is preparation. Uh, next stage, we're going to be cutting some pallet. We've already cut the pallet wood. And we're going to be slicing it through to make the wind spinner pieces. There's no set length, you've got the short, long, you can work around it afterwards. Okay, oh and I also make this little tool. That keeps my hands well away from the blade and the bottom of my elbows for when I'm pushing through. Okay. For the noise of the saw it is old a bit like me and um, <laughs> this was actually found in a dumpster in a skip and we've got it working one interesting thing I found if you can see this that's woodworm okay now it is treatable <laughs> it is treatable but this is mainly found in our oldish furniture and unfortunately um, we don't want it so anything with woodworm in goes straight into the bin and we burn it we don't want that right uh, on to the very next oh sorry I forgot these are the slats that we've just cut out now these should be pretty well uniform the same thickness the same depth if there's a little variation it doesn't matter because it can all be sanded down. We haven't got the um, the beauty of a thickness and planer. So just a quick sand over will do the trick. They look professional when they're stand sanded up. Okay, on to the next stage. Right, today with the wind uh, spinner, I'll leave that to do itself. The main component is the wood 
which we got for free. This is just pallet wood. As you can see, it's a soft wood, easy to cut, stains up beautifully. Put that out of the way. The main component is a thread bar, one piece that goes from top to bottom. I'm making mine about just under a foot long and these bars I'm very lucky I got these for free courtesy of Billy who runs the convent just up the road um, and I salvaged these when we took the ceiling get full ceiling out but for optimal size I'm taking three lengths out of each one and uh, today I'm going to make 12 so there's a dozen wind spinners coming out of just this little handful. Now, if you're going to make them professionally and sell them on, these are light for postage. And if losing, using light pallet wood as well, the weight is minimal. So your customer won't have to pay the earth to get them delivered to them. Right, okay, you know where the wood comes from because I've shown you earlier. Uh, the other components are a fishing swivel, which is quite more professional if you're going to sell these on I suggest that you get a good old fishing swivel because the slightest wind will turn them and also for packaging a butterfly nut at the top or the bottom or both and that way you can flat pack them and sell them on if you're just making them for yourself and you want one or two for Christmas presents and got and your own garden you can choose any length Put as many slats in as you like and again you don't have to bother with the butterfly nuts you can just put locking nuts in and it'll stay firm for years to come right okay i'll uh, i'll come back with the next stage okay this is the pillar drill again another dumpster special uh but we've got it working we've got it working and this is just to do the centre holes. You can use a normal drill, cordless drill. Anyway, as long as the centre holes are somewhere close. Uh, I've got quite a few here to do. So this is another part of the process. It's not a five minute job, but you can make quite a few in a day. So, right, I'll carry on knocking the holes in and I'll speak to you in a bit. Hi. Okay, now we've done the thread bar. You've done your drills, your holes. So now it's time to put it together. So one locking nut or a wing nut and a washer and you put your wood on like so. Uh, that'll give you the rough idea. When you've got to the length that you're going to be doing, whatever that is, <laughs> uh, tighten it all up with another nut. I'll come a bit closer to the camera and you mark it up like a blunt and diamond. There's no set right or wrong way of doing this, but as a rule of thumb, if that's an inch, you go two there, but these are two inches and four inches. So somewhere around that area, but there's no right or wrong way. And once you've made a couple, you can, uh, you can work it out. Right, now you got to that stage, you're gonna have to cut these out. You can either use a jigsaw, hand saw, table saw, circular saw, it doesn't matter. Um, the table saw is obviously the quickest way. Right, once you've done that, you should end up with something that looks like this. Now that's again about an inch too smaller than the other one, but uh, it's just for example. When you've got them all together and you've sawn them down, I find it best just to go around the outside with the angle grinder and with the sanding disc on and you should end up with something that looks like that uh, it's pretty good it makes old pallet wood look like new in fact it's exactly the same colour as what you get out of the shops so once you've done that you sand down both sides quick run down down the edge and also any sharp bits on your thread bar now's a good time to thread this to flatten this out with the angle grinder and drill a small hole you should just about be able to see the hole there not too big not too small just enough to get your swivel attachment through uh, which is what holds the movement I'll just hold it back up just to make sure you can see the hole there okay 
Right, and then it's just a case of opening up and you get a rough idea. It only takes a minute. And that's your finished product. I like that. You like that? I like that. Okay, you want, you want this one? <laughs> I'd like that one, please. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so what we'll do, it's, I use 20, 15 to 20 pound fishing line, although anything you got lying around will do. As you can tell, I'm a, I was a sea fisherman when I lived near the coast. Now I'm two hours away, so I don't go very often. So there's your finished product. And I'll come back to you with uh, uh, a picture of the eight or nine, or ten, it's got ten. Ten, ten of the ones that we've uh, made in this little batch. Eleven with that. Eleven with this one, sorry. <laughs> okay, also, we I like to stain these in linseed and teak oil. You can use any oil you like, paints, but I'll show you that in a moment. And here we are with the finished products. We've got a few left. Uh, there's two short, because for that we'd like to thank Neil and Fee, who actually bought two before we did the video ending. <laughs> So thank you to Neil and Fee, big thumbs up. Uh, these are different sizes, different shapes. Like I say, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. We have Indian wood stain, teak oil and linseed oil. We have a bucket of all different oils that we don't throw away, we just dunk it in there and leave it. Indian rosewood. There's a, a, a rosewood uh, medium oak stain. This one we even burnt to give a burnt effect. That was a trial, never done that before, but it looks okay. This one is green car spray, and only in France would you see 1970s car with that colour green on. <laughs> okay, thank you Ty. First of all, thank you to Kim for doing the photography, and uh, telling me when I've sp said things wrong, it's quite often. Uh, Sean, Sean and Sam, thank you very much for the, uh, the boost, really appreciate it. Uh, Billy at the Chateau and the convent for uh, letting me have so many materials over the years. Uh, we stopped part summer and we'll be using a lot of those in the next uh, few months. Then, oh, editing. First of all, I'm going to apologise. This is my first video. Editing's not my fortnight. Fortnight? Fortnight. My, <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fortnight. It is a bit of fortnight. It's not yeah. a fortnight. <laughs> it fortnight. It's, it's not what I'm good at. And forte is the word I was looking for. It's not my forte and not. It takes a couple of years to learn how to edit properly, and I've probably tried to do it in a couple of days. So we'll get there. it's going to show. We'll get there. But we are going to get we'll some get help there. with that. We'll get there. <laughs> future future uh, videos. The next one is bird boxes. They look rustic. They're made out of pallets, made out of tree bark and wood. And the best part of it is they only take 10 minutes each to make. So we'll have quite a few to show you on the next video hopefully edited a little bit better. Uh, did I thank everybody else? No, we need to thank oh, okay. you we guys need to, out We need there. to thank all you guys out there, all over the world, from Australia, America, Canada, oh, UK, everywhere. From a heart. Uh, we, we mean that, uh, we're blown away. We are. So thanks ever so much for the, all your support, your likes, your, your following, your subscription, um, your sharing, everything. Um, absolutely blown away. Can't thank you enough. I can't now. <laughs> no. We've got uh, another 50 ideas, so that's one a week for a year for you. Hopefully to either save you money or make you money. Hopefully for free, depending on what products you've got lying around. Okay, all the very best to you and see you on the next one. Better edited I hope. Thank you, bye now. <laughs>